Hello and welcome love of fooders. Today we're going to be making a vegetable side dish using these green beans. You know these green beans. These are the French green beans that you can leave the tips on. I like to buy these because they're easy and you don't have to sit and snap beans and the tips don't take away from what you are eating like they would on a very stringy type of bean. But we're going to be kicking these green beans up a couple of notches with, of course, you heard me say it, bacon. Now this is some bacon that we've already fried off. And we fried it off until it was crisp but not burnt. And this is a dish that was made for me all the time as a child um, with salt pork. But we're going to be using bacon because it's more readily available. And, you know, this bacon was just... Some pieces that I had cut off the ends, you know, the pieces that nobody ever really wants to eat anyway. Um, so why not use it instead of wasting it? We're going to be adding in some balsamic vinegar and some spices to make this green bean dish fabulous. With Easter coming up, this is a dish that you can serve either warm or cold. I know we're always juggling so many different dishes when we're entertaining uh, during the holidays. So again, this is one that can be served cold. I'll be back in just a moment to show you how all of this comes together. All right, we're back. So what we've done is we nuked our beans for about three minutes in the microwave and then plunged them into this ice cold water. We're going to drain these and we're heating up the grease that was left over from our bacon. Yes, we're cooking these in bacon grease. That is going to help with this flavor. So I'm gonna drain these beans out. Get them out, because they're nice and chilled. I'm gonna dry them just a tad with some paper towels so that we don't drop uh, the wet beans into the hot grease, because we know that will make a mess, right? So we're gonna dry them up just ever so slightly. Oil and water don't mix, they don't like each other. So I'm just dropping some paper towels in a bowl, in that same bowl that I had the beans. We're just getting some of that moisture out of them while that oil heats up. They don't have to be perfect, but I just don't wanna be dropping any water into that oil. That should be fine. If you wanted to, you could do this ahead of time and then just let these sit, they would be fine. I have my oil on about medium, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just drop a small one in, see what's happening here, see if it's starting to sizzle yet. And it's not, just quite yet, so that's fine. We'll give it just another minute or so, we'll let that heat up. We're gonna be putting the green beans in and then sauteing the green beans like you see them do in um, some of the Asian restaurants when you order green beans. So we par cooked them in the microwave and then we'll be finishing them off in uh, what, what's considered more like a flash fry in this um, skillet with our bacon grease. Now I can see that it's starting to sizzle just a little bit over here. So I know that that is starting to get warm. If I move it around I can see, yeah, my grease is starting to come up. So I'm gonna feel pretty confident about dropping these in. We're not deep frying them. I just want to put them, make sure that um, the oil is hot so that they don't absorb all the grease in and just um, become soggy. So we're going to pop those in. And you can hear it popping, and that's because I have a little bit of water still in there. Remember, I said we were going to have some water, but not a lot. And just make sure that when you're doing this that you're standing back, so just in case anything does spit at you, you don't get that bacon grease in your eye, that's, that's not fun. And I always wear an apron when I cook bacon, or you work with bacon grease, because it does splatter. So we're just moving these around, kind of get letting them cook up. I'm going to add in some of my ingredients as we go, and I'll be back in just a moment. Right, these have been cooking for about another two, two and a half minutes so far, and I'm going to start adding in some of my spices, and I'm going to start with my garlic first. So I have a teaspoonful of garlic. And you got to be careful because it's still spitting a little bit. I'm going to also add in my garlic powder. And again, you all know that I don't measure, but it's going to be about a half a teaspoon. 
I'm going to add in some onion powder as well. If I can get this one open. And then we'll be putting in some salt. Well, we, I don't think we need salt, but we'll be putting in some pepper instead of salt. We'll just use pepper in our bacon. So let's go ahead and put some of this onion seasoning. Looks like it may have gotten a little bit damp somewhere along the way in the shipping. All right, and again, so about a half a teaspoon of onion powder and then black pepper. I like to use fresh black pepper whenever I can in my cooking. And again, we'll do that about, um, that was about a quarter of a teaspoon. So we want to make sure that we don't burn the garlic here. So you don't want to do this too high because if the garlic in fact burns, it'll ruin the whole dish. And we want our beans to kind of be al dente. Now I know if you're a southerner, you're going to tell me that you cook beans until they're mush. But that's not the way the rest of the world eats them. By all means, if you prefer them that way, cook these until they're mushy. But I don't recommend it. This is supposed to be more like a fresh green bean, like you would find in a salad. Not really a green bean that you would uh, serve next to some grits and cornbread. Not that there's anything wrong with those. I love those too. But this dish is a little bit different. Even though it has the pork in it, it's uh, more of um, an Italian type dish with all of that garlic. Again, I always say this, I wish I had smell-o-vision because I'd want you to smell the aromas that, have that are coming off of these wonderful beans. Um, everything is coming together, they're cooking very nicely. And in just a moment, we're going to be able to take these off. And we're going to put them back in that bowl that we were using the ice water. I've just dried it up nicely. And we're going to toss them with the bacon that we fried off a little bit earlier and that balsamic. So we'll be back to show you what we're doing in just a moment. All right, we're back. And so what I want to show you is an example of how you'll know when these are done. So when you pick up the bean, I'll use this one for example and it wiggles just ever so slightly, that means it's done. And if you're not sure, as always, you can just bring it up and take a taste. Mmm, that's pretty good. I'm gonna give it just another minute. And I think you could use a little bit of salt, but I'm gonna wait until Everything is said and done to determine that. They have a nice little flavor. They're not overpowering. You're not going to be killing anybody with the garlic. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these, pop them right into this pan. And you can see as I'm picking them up how they're bending just ever so slightly. And what I want to tell you is if you do make these with salt pork, they're wonderful too. Um, just make sure you cook the salt pork really well and put it in tiny little chunks to start off with. Um, because that will give it more flavor. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that from the heat. And I'm going to go ahead and add in, remember that bacon. I'm going to toss that bacon in. I'm going to toss it around. We're going to add in just a little bit. And I'm just going to put that over there for a second so that I don't rest it on the hot burner here. We're gonna add in about a teaspoon of balsamic vinegar. Now when my dad used to make this, he'd use red wine vinegar, which would be more traditional. And if you don't like the darker color on the bean, you know, the dark balsamic vinegar, you can certainly use a red wine vinegar. And I'm just gonna to toss that around. 
And then we're going to taste and we're going to decide, does it need to have that little bit of salt added? I think it does. I'm going to go ahead and give it just a little bit of salt. About a teaspoon and a half, maybe. And if I want to, I just toss them. And if I want to, I can certainly add in a little more garlic salt or anything else for flavoring. It's not going to hurt it. I'll be back to um, take a picture of these so you can see how they look in the bowl. I hope you've enjoyed watching For the Love of Food.